what is the position someone should be working themselves into? So I'll paint the picture that I think, and then tell me if you disagree, if there's a better thing. Okay, number one, I think because only the paranoid survive, there's actually two things you need to be paranoid about right now. Paranoia number one is you can pull out of the market too soon and miss real opportunities. And since no one is gonna be able to accurately forecast the timing, you have to be thoughtful about that. So one strategy might be just that you dollar cost average in every day, make sure that you have a certain amount of savings so that you're not gonna find yourself in a panic situation. And as Morgan Housel said, uh, the, the whole purpose of having cash in a bull market is to make sure that you don't have a forced sale in a bear market. And I thought that was a, a really wise way. So uh, what I'm going to present to people is there's so many variables on the table and I don't know how they're going to go. I just want you to be in a position where you have optionality. So we're going to optimize for options. To do that, you're going to want to be largely in um, cash and index funds, which is not going to sound sexy. And when I say cash, I'm talking money market, treasury bills, something like that. Five points right now. Yep. yep. Which is fucking amazing. Yep. yep. All day, every day, I'll take it. Uh, now would not be the time, in my opinion, to invest in anything where you're not just an absolute complete expert, where you have so much disproportionate knowledge that you're able to really recognize a deal when you see it. So I've heard you talk a lot about some commercial real estate stuff that you're looking at because you know things are gonna go on sale. You, oddly enough, I still find this so fascinating, you really understand the baseball card market. So you'll know a deal when you see a deal. So it's like that to me, optionality, cash, um, only investing either sort of blindly in index stocks, not just completely removing yourself because you could miss you know, it could be six months, a year before, two years before this is, who, who knows? We really can't predict it. But that we are in a time of such volatility that if you are not taking every step with sort of maximum paranoia, uh, you're making a mistake. So that's, I'm sure if somebody were here, they'd have a lot of questions for that. But that's my rough guidance to myself. I think that was fantastic. I think it was fantastic and we're very aligned. Look, I mean, here, here's also the thing, right? Like where... You're, you're sitting there watching some of these guys sitting on a lot of cash. Why are they sitting on a lot of cash? Are they sitting on a lot of cash in, in, in case shit hits the fan? Is that what they're doing? Or are they just kind of sitting on a lot of cash wondering, I don't really know what's going on. When I say people, I mean Berkshire Hathaway. I mean, these, these guys have a lot of cash right now. They're sitting on the table. And, uh, you know, maybe they're not buying value stocks yet because they don't yet believe value stocks are here. Berkshire Hathaway, Okay. If you're not in this business, if, if you're not in the business of investments, financial advisor, broker, day trader, don't play around. Do not play around and get crazy about it. Um, crypto, a lot of people got into crypto and NFT, and that was not their world. They didn't know about it. They lost a lot of money. I mean, a couple of guys made $90 million, but the people that bought their stuff lost $89 million, mm -hmm. but they got their money. There's a lot of guys that made the money in NFTs, but... It was a gamble for everybody. And everybody's like, oh my God, but I believe it and all this other stuff. Okay, great, that's pretty crazy. You know, what about this and what about that? Now, does that mean NFTs are going away? Absolutely not. My kids still buy stuff on Roblox and skins and all that. There's an element of it that is not going to go away. Guaranteed. Is there 95% of NFTs that are not coming back? Yes, probably. Some of them are gonna be gone. Again, my opinion. I, I have interest in things I know about, and I'm interested in, like right now, you know, I'm looking at stuff, the card market got destroyed the last six months, destroyed. Guys are sitting on big cards, they were thinking they're gonna make a lot of money on it, they're not right now, okay? Cars that would have sold for $2 million two years ago are selling for $400,000 today. Wow. But they're gonna end up selling for that value. They're not going away because it's art. It's non-duplicatable assets. You can't duplicate these pieces, especially if it's things that are very few of, okay? So if one of one, they're not gonna go away. Art, Jamie Dimon's got a $900 million art collection. Why? Dave, Dana White is telling me about a picture he has in his uh, office. He showed me this yesterday that he paid $200,000 for it. That picture is probably worth eight to $10 million today. Art, money in art being made, again, non-duplicatable assets are very, very valuable. Whatever there's few of, very valuable, but only touch it if you know a lot 
about it if you don't don't even get close to it if you know nothing about crypto don't even get close to it don't get too crazy about, oh my god i'm hearing you know bitcoin's going to go to 100,000 it may go to 500,000 but don't do it because you're guessing cuz somebody else said it do it because you've done a lot of due diligence in it so if you don't want to have that kind of a risk tolerance indexing is the way to go to play it safe now uh, to to the small community of crazies that <laughs> have an itch and a tolerance for madness, okay? This isn't everybody, this is some. When you have a certain amount of money, I'm talking to my Goldman guy, he comes in, we're having our conversation. He says, hey, here's what I think we can do with this amount of money. I said, okay, what about it? He says, here's a strategy we can use the next 90 days. I said, okay. I said, do you have any questions for me? He says, I got one question for you. Are you okay? if in the next six months we lose $55 million in this? What a great question, just straight up. And I'm like, mm, no, I'm not okay with That's this. That's a big nut. He says, uh, no problem, totally get it. Then we can't go the way that this is one of the options we can go on. Because what do you think about a chance of a World War III happen in the next six to 12 months? I don't know, man. I don't know if I'm at 50%, but I'm at 10%. Well, 10 is pretty high. Yeah, I agree. Okay, if that happens, how bad is it going to be? You know, like during COVID, Dow went to 18,000. I don't know if you remember for that minute that Dow went to 18,000. Everybody was like, holy shit, what's going on? But very quickly went back to 32,000. So it recovered very quickly. Okay, so what does this mean? If you think a possibility of craziness is going to happen, that you keep cash and it happens, you can buy in dollar cost average. Okay, yes. You think you're that brilliant that you can time it? Historically, very few people have been able to do it, and those who did got purely lucky. Do you want to be part of that camp? Because most people, historically, what happened to them? They missed being in the market on the five best days. Correct. And missing those five best days ended up costing them the difference between making 13% over a 20-year period to making 7.8%. Correct. And that's a lot of money, by the way, between those two. So if that's not the world you want to play, don't do it. Don't at all do it. For me, the game we're playing it's a different game. The game is, there's going to be a lot of assets for sale the next couple of years, okay? And if you've made the right choices and you have cash and some of these assets don't perform the next couple of years, there's the opportunity to pick up assets. There's the opportunity to pick up small businesses. I'm talking to a guy who runs a, you know, a, a, a business that they're doing $34 million a year and... He, I said, how many companies are there in the marketplace that you could buy right now that are between five to $10 million? There's at least eight. How many of them can't stand you? One of them, we never talk. I said, okay, the other seven, how many of them love you? Three of them. Do the other four know you? They know of me, but we don't have a relationship. Get it close to them as soon as possible. Make the follow-on phone call. He said, what do I tell these guys? This is what the call sounds like. Hey, John, listen, man, we're both in the same industry. How's business? And you'll know by their answer how it's doing. And you're going to say, oh, Great. Unlike XYZ, we did 32% last month over last year. Proof. Okay, great. Guess what? That's not who you want to talk to. Next call. You got six more left. Okay. Hey, Larry, how are things? Oh, um, yeah. I mean, look, I mean, some areas were doing good. Some areas, uh, why? What, what's going on? Did somebody tell you something? Okay. Boom. Check. What's the conversation? Larry, here's what's going on. The reason why I'm calling you. We're getting calls from guys in our space and... Some of them are not, want, are not doing as well as they thought they were going to do, and they're about to run out of cash, and they're calling us because we have access to certain relationships and contracts and technology that they want to take advantage of. I thought just to give you a call because we're within the same space, are you in a place right now where you want to entertain possibility of a partnership where we can help you with our company or no? If no, listen, I'm not going to impose. But if you are, maybe we can have that conversation. Five-second pause. Uh, you know, about nine months ago, I would have told you to go to hell, but, uh, yeah, maybe we can talk. Perfect. Um, when do you want to come to the office or would you like us to come to your office? Would it be okay if we first met at a coffee shop away from everybody? No problem. Let's do that. Then he goes sit down. What's going on? Look, man, I don't know if I want to do because I heard this and I heard that and I heard this. I don't want to be ripped off and I don't want to be this and I don't want to be that. Bro, let's just see what we can do with the numbers. If we can't, great. If we can, we'll support you. Go do your thing. Then the conversation starts. So there's different levels right now in the marketplace. If you have cash, 
a lot of it, companies are going to be for sale the next three, six, 12 months. And mm. there's going to be a lot of opportunities for you to increase your market share within the industry. If not, you're somebody that doesn't have a very high risk tolerance. Do not screw around the next six, 12 months thinking you're Nostradamus and you can predict the future because the market's going to destroy you. It's undefeated. Yeah. Yeah. Timing the market is a ludicrous proposition. People nonetheless do it. But what I find is that it actually attracts people that have a gambling mentality. That was my biggest surprise getting into crypto because I don't have a gambler's mentality at all. Uh, so I just had a failure of theory of mind. So I did not see that coming. And then I was in a chat group and I realized, oh my God, all of these people are poker players. I was like, this is the same mentality. Like to them, they're getting a gambler's high right now of taking a risk on some crazy coin and you know rolling the dice and seeing if they can time everything correctly. And I just thought, whoa, okay, that's a, a very different beast. So yeah, in given that my goal is to help people put together ideas that are actually going to help serve them, um, this to me feels like the time to learn what paranoia, positive paranoia really is. Success is really a game of mixing optimism and paranoia. You're going to need both. And if you don't have a constant sense of this could all go wrong, I could be wrong. I could have the timing wrong. Maybe there really will be a recession. Maybe there won't be a recession. Um, if right now feels like peak predictability, you're really in trouble. That would be the thing I would just red flag instantly if you feel like you have a real sense of what's going on. Uh, yeah, I would say not the right move. And so figuring out, okay, how do we deal in a time of massive uncertainty? What I find so interesting about Ray Dalio, and it makes me very sad that he doesn't like to talk about this, is that Ray is extraordinarily good at understanding the historical trends the problem is everything is sort of plus or minus 50 years. And it's like when you've got a swing like that, there's just almost nothing you can do with it. If you like that clip, check out another powerful clip right here and I'll see you there.